And it's a special kind of camaraderie where a lot of the mu musicians come with a fairly high level of skill and a high level of obedience to the magisterium. It's rare to find both. And I feel like it's a one-two punch where skilled musician plus living in the heart of the church. Having something in common with everybody there, despite the fact that you're from, people from here from all corners of the globe, literally, and um, majority from the U.S. though, and the fact that everybody loves the same thing, you're all here for the same purpose, and you're all, you're all getting the same thing out of it. It's, it's amazing. It, it really brings home the fact that the church is universal, at least to me. And, and, and they find themselves thrilled and with new friends, too. Oh, right? I mean, this friendships is are, yeah. are formed here yeah. for, forever. Forever. It's a very, very happy crowd. Yeah, exactly. And what about the opportunity to share stories with people? You know, uh, people go the whole year feeling alone. You know? You can be in a parish where the music is driving you crazy for some reason. That often happens. But you don't sure anybody, you don't see a way out, and you're not sure that there are other people who may agree with you that there's got to be something better. You come here and people share stories, and constructive stories, right? Very much so. Yeah, it's not just a bunch of com That's complainers. right, we find like-minded people. This is certainly a colloquium of like-minded people of yeah. all walks of life. Professional musicians, this year we had some stars, some very famous uh, people who were uh, attending the colloquium and performing at the colloquium by playing the organ. And uh, we had people who had never been to any, anything like this in their life, never been to a chant workshop or maybe taken a class in uh, uh, Renaissance polyphony or anything. And here they are and they're singing that right. music at right. mass every day. Right. And they get together and they talk to, they talk to their friends and they say, well, how did you go about introducing the Kyrie in your parish? Mm. What edition of the, which, which mass setting the Sanctus did you start with? You know, right. and that is just the collegiality. Yeah, the just, collegiality. You can see it's just yeah. like a match. Yeah. Ladies. and people are looking to improve things, right? It's not just grumbling. Don't you hate this? Don't you hate that? No, no. no it's always directed towards how to improve things, That's constructive right. stuff. Like this is the best possible opportunity to immerse yourself in a whole week of nothing but incredible sacred music, incredible presenters who really know what they're talking about, and I think the best thing about it is that you're surrounded by people who think the same way as you do. They're on board with what the church teaches about sacred music. They don't have any questions about it. They don't have any problems with singing in Latin, so it's like heaven. Uh, then came the change of language. Pastor called me in and said, next Sunday I'm putting all my parts into English. When are you putting yours? And I said, well, as soon as we can find music that's worth replacing what we have in Latin. And he said, that will be fine, without realizing was that my, my answer was, probably never. <laughs> I believe that the use of the vernacular in the liturgy is, is a, a gift for us to enable us to understand a little bit better uh, the mystery that we're entering into. But um, it wasn't, I, I don't believe, the uh, intent of the council to uh, completely strip away the Latin or to make us think that it is all about understanding because I think, it's, I think it was St. Augustine who told us that if you can understand it, it's not God.
Catholic musicians need to ask themselves, what are they doing? What are we seeking to do? Are we seeking to bring uh, the world into the church? Or are we seeking to uh, assist in the creation of something completely different? Something, something that when you walk into the church, you hear a sound, you think, okay, that is holy, that is beautiful. Um, that is something special, something unique that I can't get anywhere else, you know. And that, that's, that's what sacred music offers. It offers a radical difference, and it's a radical project, and it's a progressive project in many ways. We take something special like Latin and then cherish it. You grab that text and hold it up to choir and say, what do you see? And it was like a diamond. And someone said, I see yellow, I see green, I see blue. We all had something different to say about it. And we we're all looking at the same thing. That's a sign of real poetry. Latin is, is a wonderful language for poetry. We have opted for the paradigm. We know that you don't use Latin in all of your liturgies or perhaps very many of them, in fact. Um, but perhaps that you are adding a little bit more Latin uh, from time to time. When, when, when he did sing it, someone came upstairs, a member of the congregation, and said, does your choir understand Latin? And I said, not really, but we talk about it. He says, I can tell by the way they sing that they understand what they're singing. I would say I'd give good credit to this colloquium for that. I asked him if we could do it in Latin, or at least part of it in Latin. So I brought my Libra Uzualis with me that I had from a friend um, that had been rescued from a convent that was being closed. So my Libra is full of little pencil marks where the nuns have, you know, they obviously spend a lot of time practicing. Um, so I sang Credo IV um, from the Libra for my, uh, because of course you know you have to say the creed, or in, in my case sing the creed, and um, so that's what I did at my confirmation. We need to recapture this universal language of music that we share in common as Catholics, and it's tragic that there are too many people that, that, that haven't grown up in this, but it's not going to be true for very much longer. You know, things are, are dramatically changing right now. Uh, the ground is shifting, I think. Uh, and I think if we look 10 years from now, we're going to see a uh, remarkable difference even still. On one Sunday, to have turned everything back into Latin, it's going to be a cold shower on an entire congregation. Right. And uh, it's not only going to be a cold shower, it's going to be an empty church. Right. And so uh, it ha they have to be educated, and they have to be educated gradually. Some people want to go and want to go home. Like they might go to a, a conference or a trade show, they want to go home with a bag of tricks. They're going to immediately make changes that are, you know, evident right away. That may not be the case. It may take more time because it, studying chant and liturgical music, it's a lifetime study. I believe myself that the proper thing to do in most cases and in most parishes is to simply start by adding a piece of Gregorian chant in the course of the normal Mass. Because I think that over a period of time, the repetition of these Gregorian pieces will prove fruitful. Yeah. The repetition of these pieces will incorporate them into people's mentality. 